Hey, good morning. Um, I'm probably not gonna be looking at you all too much because I need to see where I'm going. Hope you guys are doing well. I just had a quick question, actually. Well, I'm gonna fix my shoe. Um, so, doesn't it strike anybody else as odd that although we have this concept that breast cancer runs in the family, you know, that a statistic that was given to me by my surgical, uh, my surgeon was 85% um, of breast cancer cases actually have no family history. Does that not strike anybody else as an odd number? It does me. So that right there says a lot about <clears throat> emotions and environment, a lot. And emotions not in a bad way, it's just everything is becoming more amplified. And I feel like it has a lot to do with the environment, but not one anything in particular, it's all of it. And something I talked about in my YouTube video the other day that I wanna briefly hit on here, which is these chemicals, um, they're signaling molecules. Over 70,000 of them have been confirmed endocrine disruptors. And they're not just impacting humans. See, the way plants work is they release signaling molecules to notify the surrounding plants that there's a potential threat. Salicylic acid is one of those types of chemicals. The plant that produces it emits it to notify other plants that they need to buckle up and protect themselves. That's what they do. So when you have these environmental chemicals, man-made chemicals, that are being released into the air all over the place, of course they're going to activate the stress mechanism in a plant. Of course the plant is going to release stress chemicals, okay, that notify the plants around it. In order, so it's, this is how nature takes care of itself. We, it takes care of one another. This is a valuable lesson, truthfully. Um, nature doesn't lie, and it looks out for itself. Um, it doesn't <laughs> look at, <clears throat> hey, you're a bush. I'm not going to talk to you because I'm a tree. It doesn't do that. It just starts to release. There's no judgment. It just sends out chemicals. So with that said, these are stress chemicals. And if they are notifying other plants, and the thing is, is that although our DNA code differs in chemical structure, it's the same chemicals. And oftentimes, what we're, you know, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of similar processes regardless, meaning that the plants produce similar enzymes to the human body. Same thing can be said for animals. So with that in mind, these stress hormones are activating... <laughs> Humans and animals too, they're notifying us. So it's going to amplify our emotions because we're being notified of stress, but we're not, we're not cognizant of it. We think there's something wrong with us. We think we're hypersensitive to the people around us and, and possibly so, but these are all stress hormones. We're, we, we are actually having a chemical reaction that amplifies our emotions. And now you have, and if you don't know what's really going on, you just feel this way, you kind of just roll with it, right? Most of us are emotionally driven, so we just kind of roll with it. So beginning, beginning to check in with ourselves and go, hey, look, is this really me or what's going on? And if there's really nothing aggravating you, <laughs> then possibly um, reminding yourself of that. That's, that's one of the reasons why the mind actually has a very significant role in our health and wellness. But that said, when you have a combination of plants emitting signals, you've got animals emitting signals, you've got humans emitting signals, these are all stress hormones that are being received by the olfactory receptors in the body. And so essentially, in heavily populated areas, we're seeing like, volatile situations erupt and nobody can quite understand why and so this is my assertion this is what's going on 
because you don't see that as significantly in lesser populated areas. And so why, you know, this is the reason why in your homes, if you are stressed, your animals become stressed. It's the reason why your children will almost, you know, pick up on that. We hear, this is part of our language, you guys. We pick up on one another. Well, consider we're picking up on the plants. Consider we're picking up on the animals and, the, and vice versa. And so we have this collective output, this collective emission of stress chemicals. And we, as a human, have the ability to regulate our breath. No other species can do that. And we have the ability to regulate our mind. No other species can do that either. So although we're not superior, we are at a different point where we can begin to deconstruct the stress. And it's the reason why I suggest the oils. But then again, we even have to be careful about that. And that was my other thought. For years when I first got, I mean, I, my background's in pharmacology, but for years when I got into this, uh, after I got into the oils, I was completely against medication. Ah, screw it. Conventional medicine, no. You know, I was all about health. I mean, natural health, alternative health, you name it. And then as my practice continued to grow and my investigations and my contemplation about life and what the hell's going on around us, it led me to understand that the true barrier lies with those who are practicing alternative and natural health. Please don't think I'm being disrespectful. I was right there. And for the longest time, I saw a gap. I didn't think the conventional model really appreciated the natural model. Now that I'm in the throes of the conventional model, it's clear they recognize the value to natural health, you guys. It is clear. When I have anesthesiologists telling me I have to quit using oils, you know, for, uh, you know, any blood thinning oils up to a, uh, 10 days prior to surgery, when I have anesthesiologists telling me I have to quit all natural supplements due to interactions, they recognize this. When I have three oncologists, three on oncologists that recognize this, it's not, it's not a gap on the conventional side. It's a gap on the natural side. We've got to stop battling one another. The two worlds work together. And that's really what I'm here to introduce is to help break that barrier. Somebody wants me to do potentially do a talk for a spa and spas use oils, but you know, I don't want to undercut their business at the same time. If you have, here's the deal. If you have patients, if you have cancer patients or, you know, psychiatric patients or whatever, you know, people who are just taking blood, high blood pressure meds or any kind of medication and they're going to their doctor and they're being told by their doctor to be careful when you're using natural remedies. Okay. This is what they're being told. And then they turn around and they go into a spa and the spa is using oils all over them. What kind of, no wonder we're confused because you have one world, you know, what's considered the natural world is going, no, these are all okay. And you've got the conventional world going, no, they're not. And so the conventional world is now considered the bad guy because they're just simply trying to protect us from interactions. And I realize that they don't really, that there's a, a point where they just don't want to investigate the ins and outs of oils and so forth and how they're all, you know, and beginning to break it down. And that's really where I'm at right now is breaking it down. If you're using blood thinners, then you should avoid these oils. If you're using uh, antidepressants, you should avoid using these oils, th that kind of thing. Because at least it gives us some options. And that's what I'm facing because they're going to put me on medication because well, they didn't get the cancer out completely. And, um, so we need to go on medication. So I'm learning which oils I can use that will work with that, with that chemo. So just thoughts, just thoughts. And I hope you guys are doing well. And I appreciate you listening. If you watched this far, hey, yay. Have a beautiful day. We got blue skies here for now. See ya.